What's up guys, it's Ray at Sahara Coins. We're gonna do something a little bit different in this video. Uh, you, some of you may know who this person is. It's actually Dave Carney from DaveAndChad.com. Uh, we're gonna bring him in today and just ask him some questions like why in the world do you want gold or silver? And what do you think about coins? So, Dave. What's up big guy? You're in my territory now. I feel, I feel kind of like strange, like we have a green screen behind us or something. That's true, I know. It's this beautiful it's, setting it's, is not a green screen. I love it, I know. Yeah, it's amazing. We're at the beach, right? I mean, it's this true. is what we're doing. We're doing stories from the beach. Pretty much. We, what kind of beach do you prefer? Because I'll make sure that's what's behind us. <laughs> you know, I was going to say, I, whatever one Corona's on, find your beach. I'll just the add one with all, exactly, all the beers and things like <laughs> that'll that. That'll work. We, we're in Las Vegas, so it'll probably be Mandalay Bay Beach. But yeah, that's good enough. That'll work that's too, right? That's good enough. As long as you don't go swimming in the, the, the putrid water that's there, it's, it's probably not too bad. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's a really good point, actually. <laughs> you, you can catch yourself a, a thing to break up your marriage there. That's that is you can absolutely right the truth. Come home so. and find a whole bunch of hosts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all too many times. Exactly. So... Getting back to business, sure. basically, man, I wanted to talk to you about coins, gold, right. silver. I mean, I know, obviously, I met you a long time ago. You were doing a little bit with it, but why in the world do you like silver, gold, all of that stuff? Right. So when we first met a couple of years back, I mean, I guess three or four years ago, it was more about the changing sea in, in the economy, right? Like, where did we see things going economically? Did we think that the Federal Reserve was on to something? I mean, did we right. really think that the repeal of Glass-Steagall was a great idea? No. And so it became, you know, a pretty common thread, at least amongst guys that are looking, or gals too, that are looking for some sort of true freedom right. to start to seek these these kinds of shops out. So when you and I first started talking, referred to by a friend, Chad, by the way, from DavidChad.com, uh, it became pretty clear to me that one of the better ways to secure the money, I mean, not make millions of dollars. That's not what this is about, to make millions of dollars. But to secure the money was to, to put it into something that'll have continual strength and you put me into a numismatic was my first coin. Uh, since then, I mean, bullion's basically been king, but um, I was telling you the other day, we're looking at all this silver we've got now, and I feel like a small kid because I'm on the bed. I've got all this real money around. It's it's so yeah. much fun. You're like Scrooge McDuck exactly. and almost like <laughs> diving into your mind. I, I do tell you, though, don't do that. You may end up with yeah, a head injury. That this could be a CTE. It. Could, could, right. You know, kind of a and then case. you're going to see it right then and there. All Oh, your silver is gone and it's yeah. going to Liberty Health. <laughs> so anyways, above and beyond that, man, um, you know, you mentioned the numismatic. Yeah. You have, uh, I believe we got you a Carson City, wasn't it? Yes, Carson we did. City yep. yep, there's a Carson City Morgan there. So here's the thing. Obviously, I know a little bit about the mints and what's rare and what's not, but for you, let's just let's just say that it had nothing to do with, with information that we knew. Mm -hmm. If you walked into a coin store yep. and you were new to it, what would your expectation be? What would you What would you initially think you were going to encounter? I don't want to. Okay. Not what you have encountered, okay. but what, what would you think? You um, would well, initially, I would think, and and this will happen anywhere you go to a mechanic shop, you buy a car, you go buy a house, whatever the deal is. You initially think you're going to encounter somebody that knows way more than you and is trying to kind of fleece you. Right. That is generally the way that I would have thought that this kind of business would have gone down. Right. right. I mean, somebody has so much more knowledge that you can basically take advantage of you because of their particular knowledge, especially with something so unique. So that's kind of what I expected, completely the opposite right. of what we have here, but that was one of my initial thoughts. Now, it's it's good to hear you say that because uh, I talk, you've seen some of the videos. I talked to Helen Blue in the face about, we want you to be the educated collector. We want to educate you. I get it. I work here. I'm going to tell you what I want to tell you. That's not what I do. Yeah. I, I tell you the truth. Yes, he does. And I will educate you. Yes, he will. But uh, the reason I bring that up is because, you know, anything. If you see the guy on late night TV telling you yeah. that you're buying a, you know, $400 blender and it's going to chop your grapefruit better than anything else, you just go with it because he tells you that? Not usually. Right. I mean, some folks do. But some folks not do. Not usually. So your opinion is from that outside perspective that. Yeah, you, this this industry is kind of blanketed by some people who would like to take advantage of you. Yeah. But the difference is when you came in uh -huh. and the guys originally approached you, start talking to you about coins, there's not a pressure to sell you. So you were able to make your own opinion as to what you liked. Yes. Now, one of the things I tell people is, hey, kind of look into the coins, look into silver, gold, you know, Morgans, everything. And figure out what you like. Now, how did you figure out what you like? Well, so a couple of a couple of ways. One was I um, solicited the, the advice of some people that knew, right? So Chad um, also knows a lot about gold and silver, right. and um, I started talking to him. I also started talking to a couple of friends of mine uh, who have more coin collections than I do. 
and you, you sort of come up with a baseline of what your, first of all, what your temperature is for getting into the market, right? Just like buying stocks or whatever, how much can you be willing to reasonably spend? And are you willing to take a risk on things? So when you kind of figure out where you're at, and for me, it was silver, silver and numismatics kind of matched up where I could go. Uh, then it just became, what do I like? What do I want to look at? Because right. that's what I, I, this is the fun thing. And Ray, you and I started having this conversation the other day. I'm sitting on my bed like I'm a 12 year old playing with my coins. Right. And it's really super cool and it's fun and I'm picking them up and I'm looking yep. at them and putting them into the light thinking, boy, if only I had a brown bag, I'd tone this one. <laughs> but you know, there's so much that, that comes from just personal desire. And I used to collect basketball cards when I was little. Right. right. So do you like upper deck? Do you like FLIR? Do you like tops? What do you like and why do you like it? Well, it's really a personal choice. You're going to get the same picture on all of the cards basically in the same stats, but right. it's a personal preference. So for me, uh, the Morgan dollars, things like that, it, it, Carson City, having been a Nevada resident for almost my entire life, really, really gave me a piece of personal history. So that was right. that's why I chose that way. Okay, yeah, and, and that's pretty common. I love Morgan dollars, that's okay. my thing, tell Morgan dollars. But let me, let me give you another question kind of out there. Okay. Obviously, you know, you're in decent shape. You wanna, you wanna buy what you wanna buy, you buy what you like, you know, you, you, when you see it, you want it. Right. Now, let me ask you this. Okay. If you were a multi-billionaire and you could walk into this store and pick any coin you wanted, mm. but only one, you can't mm. pull the card, I'll buy the whole store, mm. but you can pick one specific thing that you wanted. Wow. What would it be? Wow, wow, wow. So if I could pick anything in the in the entire store, I'm not entirely sure it would be a coin, actually, because Sahara Coins and Precious Metals has, I mean, currency, um, bullion. I would actually probably take a look at, at one of the more rare pieces of paper currency, okay? Right. Because first of all, coins, and, and, and this is why we like going to Sahara Coins, are gonna continue to be around. As much as they wanna push it down, suppress it, coins are gonna be around. Paper money, bye-bye. That's gonna be a thing of the past. And so when I think about currency, I would look for one of the most rare pieces of paper currency here and, and take that home because first of all, not only does it gain value, it, it, it's something you can frame. It's a very right. interesting sort of a, a conversation piece. So a lot of reasons I would take a piece of currency. So it's interesting you bring up currency. Okay. Something to let people know, again, I'm going to educate you, is that <laughs> we, uh, you know, we do do a lot of currency, but currency is one of those things that I would consider a dark horse okay. um, because over the years, currency's just been kind of pushed to the side. But it, as you know, you pick up an old piece of currency and you look at the art that's on yeah. that currency, it makes you look at our currency now and go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't want people to counterfeit our currency, yet <laughs> it, you know what I'm saying. Exactly. So pretty much we're going, kind of digressing, we're adding electronics into our currency, right. which is something interesting that I don't know if I've mentioned to you about currency. We had a customer bring in a brand new hundred dollar bill. Okay. This blue stripe that yep. runs down the Seen center. It. Seen it. Scared of it. Seen it was it. green. It wasn't the right color. So I said, you know what? We're going to send this in and have it certified, which you can do. You can certify currency. You can. And everything we send in to certify, we photocopy first. Okay. Because we want to make sure that it, you know, doesn't get, you know, misplaced or they switch them out, which they don't. Copy. Go to put the hundred dollar bill in the copy machine. Hit copy. Whole page comes out black wrong with my copy machine that's very odd so I flip it over yeah try it again everything comes out black okay so like I was saying we we checked it on multiple printers yeah I then I check a third printer okay same thing except this time all black it wouldn't even print it came out and said cancel print job cancel print job so you know wow. being the detective that I am I said does anybody have an old hundred dollar bill okay that does not have the line For sure the blue line the magnetic strip right so they give us one okay put it in the copy machine copy okay Flip it over, put it in the copy machine, copies. Right away. I'm like, wait a second, these printers are old. These printers don't have anything installed in them that would read there, or you know, that is built specifically for sure, copying Sure, sure, like if it was a new Linux or Xerox Correct. or something. Okay, got it. So I then kind of go back and I look at it and I go, well, I wonder if it'll go in a scanner, an old scanner on a computer. Well, guess what it did? It gave us the edges, jumbled the center of the note. Wow. Now, here's the thing. We know that it's a magnetic strip. Yeah. There's other things, credit cards, things like that that have magnetic strips mm -hmm. that copy just fine. Yeah. What is implanted in that note that wow. causes those machines to not work? That's a great question, man. I'm sure someone's watching this video that's gonna be like, you guys are dummies, it's right here on the internet. But <laughs> we have not found it. That's where it's all at, right? Yeah, we really haven't, haven't been able to figure out that. And my, my thing is this, fine. I understand you wanna combat people from copying money. Yeah. Whatever, you can take a picture with your cell phone if you yeah. really wanted to. But, my concern, and I don't want to sound like I'm putting my tinfoil hat on, sure. is really what else 
is that note capable of doing with that little booster? Locational stick? tracking, fingerprinting, GPS. I mean, you name it is basically Ray. What they were able. That's what I think. Right. When I saw the when I saw this first hundred dollar bill, just to go back on, I got I got terrified right. for a moment because I looked at this and I thought there's gonna be a way now for them to specifically be able to monitor the flow of this particular bill. And for a lot of reasons, you know, drug traffickers, we're gonna pretend like, you know, we're not importing a, a bunch of right. drug traffickers. But anyways, when we look at that, sure, that would be good in helping to find and locate yes. the illicit money. But I, I agree with you, very interesting. And so that's why I, I, I would like to see currency from back in the day, because that is the currency that again, I mean, what is this, 2016, 2026, yeah. we won't be having a currency right. conversation. Right. That's it. It'll Everybody's gonna be on a card. Yep. yep. Multiple reasons. One, think about how much easier it is to spend some money when it's on oh, a card. Oh man, so much more. I don't want to hand you my no. cash. I'm, you no. know, even my wife. You got cash? I'm like, no. no. You know, I have granted, but I don't want to yeah. give it to you. She gets yeah. it anyways. But that's that's just the point we're trying to make. Is it really? Uh, you know, what you say about the old currency has changed so much. Not only that, it's called horse blanket notes because they're that that's big. Huge. Yeah. Now, really, you think about that. Your wallet now is what? Eh, about yay big? Yeah. What would you do with that? Merce. Merce, man purse. Man purse. But not to get I off topic. Back then. <laughs> yeah, that's probably more more accurate. Yeah. It was a better wall. Exactly. So, all right, Dave would buy currency yeah. uh, if he could pick anything he could in the store. Anything. Um, the last thing that I, I want to ask you is if you could tell anybody that's watching, whether it's an advanced collector, a new collector, a kid, and a grandma, grandpa, whoever, okay. there's one piece of advice that okay. you would think is the most important piece of advice to give anybody, no matter what spectrum of collecting they're in, when it comes to collecting, yeah. what would your advice be? Uh, be patient. Just like with anything in life, um, good things come to those that wait. And when you're thinking about you know, gold, silver, uh, currency, any sort of precious metal, any piece of you know, high art, whatever it is, I have guitars, I have right. you know, different things. Whatever you have, be patient with it. If you're looking for the immediacy of it, the quick here, now, today, that's not for you. You're going to want to go talk to a stockbroker who will also steal money from you, <laughs> no problem, and look for a way to make it. I mean, if you're looking for the quick cash, here it's patience. If you can teach patience and have the patience, the fortitude to sit back, enjoy, first of all, having the thing, right, which is the gold, the silver, the, the, the currency, having that thing, enjoying it like I do, and then waiting it out. It's really, again, it's not about making tons of money to me. It's more right. about protection, but that would be the one thing that I would stress. So just be patient. That's awesome. So he's got a great point. Uh, patience is key when it comes to collecting and patience is also key for you guys to wait for the next video because we're going to hopefully do some more stuff like this. Maybe we'll bring in Chad and get his opinion. That would be uh, hilarious. So yeah, Chad's, yeah. yeah. I, I'm a little nervous. You may not see the whole video to be honest with you. It'll he's got this joke about hands. I can't even talk about it right now. Anyways, uh, again, we appreciate you guys watching. If you like the video, hit thumbs up. Uh, also comment, share it everywhere you can. Again, make sure you check them out at DaveAndChad.com. Um, they've got some great information and really you can dig in a little further than some of the things we've talked about. Go to SaharaCoins.com. You can view some of the coins we've discussed. You can also purchase and you can check out Daily Buy and Sells or just give us a call at 702-367-4360. And uh, you can talk to any one of our awesome guys here in the store and we'll do everything we can to help educate you. Thanks for bringing me on, brother. Later.